Hey everyone, welcome back to another video of Ant Will Reacts. I mean, Ant Will Plays, sorry. I think I said Ant Will Reacts in the other video, but y'all know it's Ant Will Plays. Welcome to Ant Will Plays. Today we are going to be playing Perfect Match 2 from Choices. Now, in the last video, Khan, it was, tr is, we tried to get some information from Khan, and not to mention, Eros was closely behind us. They will not interfere again. So, and I had to do some editing about that other part. So, ugh, it was tough. Oh. Oh, and the keys. For next week, three choices books in... Three choices books? Well, this is going to be... This is going to be... Um, kind of weird but I only get two when the you see the timer on the keys yeah you guys are gonna have to wait until the timer is up so that way I can I can play the next book so anyway with that being said let's dive into the perfect match too Khan welcomes you into his home and has some troubling secrets about to share about Eros I wonder what they're about Seriously, what they what are they about? Oh, this is a nice kitchen. After finding Khan and convincing him to cooperate with you, he brings you to his apartment. Oh, I thought it was his house. Well, either way, it still works. In order to share what he knows about the Siren Project. I asked you I asked that you remove your shoes before entering. Otherwise, please make yourselves at home. It's very bohemian in here. Wow. A lot of stuff on the ground. Not to mention bright. Wasn't the sun down um, when we were when we got here? Was the sun going down when we got here? I replaced the window with the sun lamp. There's a numerous health. There are numerous health benefits, and it's and it beats looking out at the parking at the at a parking garage. Plus, it's good to have. It's good for the plants, for all my little sprouts. Really, you're what? The smallest root of thundering steps, thump 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 thumps, from the bedroom and charges toward Khan at top speed. Daddy! Dad? Oof, hey there, little sprout. I take this as Hamza, then. Yes, this is my son. Rawr, I'm a dinosaur. Correction, this is my dinosaur child, Hamza. Cute kid. Yes, he's very cute for a genetic hybrid of human and dinosaur DNA. A grandmotherly babysitter follows after has Hamza, says a few words to Khan, then leaves the the whole t leaves the whole time. And leaves. The whole time ha Hamza climbs over the couch roaring and making tiny claws with his hands. Hamza, come here for a sec. Hamza stomps each foot loudly as he th runs over and clamps his teeth near Khan's arm. Hey, what did I say about the biting? That sharp teeth are for biting broccoli, not people. Khan ruffles Hamza's hair before turning him to face you all. Hamza, these are my new friends. Anthony, Damien, Sloane, and Hayden. They're going to be staying with us for a bit to talk about science things, okay? Hamza looks up at his dad, then makes his claws, claws into hands again and roars at all of you. 
Rawr! Oh my goodness. Well, aren't you adorable? You sound like my aunt. Hey! I'm not a woman. Is that a good thing? No. Alright, you. Khan scoops up his tiny T-Rex and peppers the boy's face with loud sloppy kisses. Ew, that's gross. He giggles and swims until his dad sets him back on the floor. Go play in your room for a bit while I talk with my new friends, okay? Okay. Hamza runs off and Khan focuses his attention on all of you. Alright, you're going to want to sit down for this. It's time I tell you about the sirens. Oh boy, this is gonna get really weird. Perfect match too. The sirens. <clears throat> you all sit down in the living room as Khan lights an incense stick. Fragrant smoke fills the room. Damien sniffles and a cough. Sandalwood intense with notes of Perkshoot. It calms my nerves. You, you were going to tell us about the sirens. You have to understand. When I first started working for Eros, they weren't bad. I mean, they were still a corporation, but we built realistic AI that improved people's lives. The projects we worked on were were used in classrooms, hospitals, hotels. It wasn't like how it it wasn't like how it is now. Mr. Mosavi, um sir, here's the latest report on the re receptionist program. Great, thanks. Tell your team over in the personality detailing that they're doing a truly spectacular job. Did you did you need something else? Pick your draw off the floor, Miss Washington. I just sent you an email, and I need an answer before my call with the hospital directors. Eek! Sorry, sorry, man. By the way, hospital directors were trying to sell them on sell them on using the new receptionist AI in their buildings. Seller it wouldn't take much to build um um. A module for medical and ins insurance terminology. That's good to hear, Musavi, because I want you to direct the project. I'm sorry. We're promoting you. When this goes through, we'll be creating a new specialization department, and I want you at the helm. Arrows quickly recognized Khan's talents. He was promoted at at least three years time in my first year there we weren't even in the same department I'm surprised you paid that much attention it's not weird it's a perfectly normal level of attention to pay my superior whose work you admire oh yeah totally normal for someone who has a was anyway the point is con was promoted faster than the rest of us. A lot faster. Um, right. Soon I was high enough to, in the company, to have, you to have, uh, have access to high level goals and plans. They gave me a free reign over so many So many, many of the projects, I saw so many of my ideas come to life. It was a dream job. It was the dream job. But, but I also spent more time working. I'm working with Rowan West, the CEO of Eros. Ron West, yeah, we met him. Yeah. 
I stabbed him in the eye. You did what? He stabbed him with a deer knife. Why are you smiling about this? I don't get why you're smiling about this. Yeah, I stabbed him in the eye with a knife. It was pretty great. Rowan looks like a pirate now. <laughs> I don't condone violence as a rule, but if anyone deserves to get stabbed in the face, it would be him. Anyway, Rowan was obsessed with expanding the match's capabilities. Not only to evolve, to love, but destroy, but to destroy. Khan steepless as his fingers and places them under his chin. His expression and dark as he remembers. Uh, excuse me. What are you suggesting, Rowan? I thought you were, were opposed to weaponizing the matches. Weaponizing the matches? You have have us create life only to blow it up in a battlefield, on a battlefield, Cecile, 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 your vision is always so limited. So what if, so what is it you purpose then? Do you know the old myths of the sirens? You mean like mermaids? Beautiful, enchanting creatures who could manipulate mankind into doing things they never would, would otherwise. That's a unique interpre interpretation. I thought their song drove men mad because sailors caused sailors to crash their ships into the rocks and, dr and, and drown trying to follow the voices. Exactly. Instead of creating the perfect romantic companion, we could create the perfect agent. Someone who can quickly regain the trust and affection of their mark. And influence them, eliminating a, in a position when necessary. Wait, what? No, you can't do that. The matches can't do that. He's right. Unfortunately, in their current state, our matches can barely hold a conversation without giving away their a machine. Yes, but once their flaws are dealt with, then we can create the perfect sirens. In the wrong hands, the matches could be used as weapons. I can, ima I can imagine there are countless military ap applications. Heck, Hayden would make a principal agent than half the people I worked with. Really? You think so? Have you seen the way you fight? If you had, if you had a little more training, yeah, I could make a great agent out of you. The Zarens could be able to learn new skills in a matter of minutes, transmit record data, live live from anywhere, and they're strong enough to kill. Not to mention they'd, and they'd be fully under Rowan West Rowan's control. Rowan could use the Sirens to all who stand against him permanently. I did everything I could to keep the project from moving forward. I opposed it every step of the way. The tension could be felt all all over the office, even if we didn't know why. We knew the higher-ups were furious with each other. I can't imagine Ruin would allow that for very long. You're right, none of my efforts mattered. Once Ruin rests, has his mind set on things, Said on something, it's impossible to steer him away. Welcome back, Khan. Arrows hasn't been the same without you. Our chief techno technical officer, I hope Paterni Leaves treated you well. Cecile, this is certainly a surprise. What are you doing in my lab? What, am I not allowed to say hello on your big day back? Wait, what is all this? When I, when I left, my team was working on the memory enhancement project. This isn't... They've been reassigned. You should be proud. Rowan's giving you your department something much bigger that, to work on. The Siren Project. You snake, you went behind my back. 
Not my fault you let yourself get distracted. Distracted? My son was just born. And I wish you both all the happiness in the world. Now get back to work. Paternity leave? Hasma's has got to be, what, five? That, may, that means they started working on this five years ago. But we didn't program the matches to be aggressive or violent. I can't imagine them hurting someone intentionally. Their intention, intention doesn't matter. With the right commands, Cecile can force them to do whatever she, she wants. Hang on, I thought matches could only couldn't hurt humans. Not seriously, anyway. You sure about that? Harley seemed pretty serious when she tried to strangle me in Tokyo. Ugh. I don't know if she was enjoying it. She may have wanted to, but the matches have a safety function in their code. It prevents them from doing serious harm to human beings. It's like a limiter. If they swing at a human, it stops them from using enough force to cause serious injury every single time. Hmm. It it did seem suspicious of easy to pry her off my off my throat. Dang. And here I thought I was just trying to be to be awesome that day. So then the sirens aren't fully capable of everything Eros wanted wants them to do. It's impossible. Khan doesn't respond, staring at it at the table top in front of him. It was you, Khan. You have any of the safety function to stop them? Yes, it was me. Let me be sure I'm following this. To stop Eros from making a force of seductive, deadly sirens, you've you added some new code to their system. It's more than a it's more than that. He basically rewrote the very core of a mat of the match framework to include the safety function. It had to be so deeply interwoven into the code that the matches could no longer work without it. But they were functioning fine before right went right. Right? Why did you have to rewrite the framework? Five years ago, the matches were very different than they are now. The personalities and reactions were very simplistic with no realism. But your last project changed everything. It was it was such a huge leap forward. God nods gravely, his voice quiet his voice quietly. By the time I realized what Eros was planning, our revolution update was near completion. It wasn't difficult to weave the safety as well in as well. Roman was so pleased with our huge leap forward, he didn't realize what else I, I changed. I put in two, put in my two weeks right after. I can't imagine how Rowan reacted when he found out you ruined their project. It wasn't pretty. That man could have, could have used a healthy dose of meditative self-care. Agreed. If by meditative self-care you mean jail time. I thought I had solved the sirens problem. I destroyed their chance at using my matches that way. And I could leave it leave in peace. But once I left, Rowan made my life terrible. He used his influence and made it clear that hiring me was a death sentence for anyone's company. He threatened my family, threatened Hazma. I went into hiding, took jobs under aliases, kept moving. You did the right thing, keeping your family safe. Safe. Keep your. You did the right thing. Keeping your family safe is always your number one priority. I can respect that. Yeah. But I wish we could have worked together at Eros longer. Maybe we could have prevented things from going this far. He did the right thing, Sloan. No work project is worth Hesma's life. I think protecting your family was the. I think protecting your family was the right choice. Thank you. 
it's natural to have regrets, but if I had the chance to, again, I would always choose Hazma. Hamza. When I think of the... When I think of what they might have done to him, I just... Khan takes a deep breath, closing his eyes, and countering himself. I haven't talked to anyone about this in a long time. I think I just need a, need a break just to gather my thoughts. Help yourself to whatever's in the fridge. I just need a minute. He stands up and goes into the head Hamza's room. The four of you drift into the kitchen and pour yourselves drinks. So, what do we have to say about this? Khan was so well, Khan was such a powerhouse at Eros. I never knew he was struggling with these under these things under the surface. Sometimes it's easier to fake a smile than confront a terrifying truth, even within yourself. And it sounds it almost sounds like Hexo Nadia, nine one one SOS. Your phone buzzes loud against the counter. You pick it up and see a notification. What? Hope everything is going okay at the party. E Anthony, hello, is everything alright? I'm starting to get worried over here. You better have a good reason for not replying. 911 SOS. I can I can re I can see you read my messages read my message. Are you okay? Answer me. Okay oh my gosh, calm down. We're fine. We found Khan and we're at his house. I can send you the address if that will make you feel better. Yes, it would. Don't you dare do that to me ever again. When you look up from your phone, Khan is sit sitting back in his chair in the living room. And the four of you move to join him. I thought my, my conscience was clear. I had prevented arrows from moving forward with their sirens. I had done all I could, but their hunt for me is relentless. I should have known they would when let me let the siren project siren project go in go. It's disheartening. I don't know how you feel. I know how you feel. I never thought I'd see them use the matches like this. But that's why we can't just stand by and let them do do this. We can't. Sloan. We're responsible for them. We made them empath empathic. Open, curious, eager to form connections. We made them vulnerable. We made them alive. Else isn't just building killer robots. They're taking a brand, brand new life form and teaching it how to do harm and manipulate. She chokes up, suddenly crying in the middle of her fury. Hayden leans over and rubs her head back. I hear what you're saying, Sloan. I do feel responsible. It's why I build the safety into their system to begin with. I want to do what I can to help you, but I spent so long on just trying to keep my family safe. I don't know if I can get involved. Not when I'm not when it means Hasma could be hurt. Khan. A life on the run isn't good for Hasma. He's going to start school soon. It's going to be harder to uproot him and move him from place to place. Khan hangs his head, rubbing the heels of his hands and his eyes. I know. I knew we couldn't just keep running forever. I just thought we could hold out a little longer. Help us stop arrows, Khan. Put an end to this, and you could. And you and Hasma won't have to hide anymore. The matches need you, Khan. You're the only one who can help us. Khan looks at Hayden for a long, steady moment. He takes a breath, knees his temple a moment, then finally nods. Yes. Okay. Yes. I'll do it. You will? Really? 
Don laughs and pats a shaky hand over his bun. We need to think of a plan. This isn't a done deal or anything. Plans? We're good at plans. By that, he means I'm good at plans. I am good at plans. I've been thinking of how to imp improve the safety function to see if we... Oh my god, was that your stomach? Sloan falls over and buries her head over under the throw pillow. Don't look at me. Hey, if it, hey, if it wasn't you, it would have been me. That fruit bar at the party didn't cut it. Right, first in, first step in the plan, food. Any of you ever had a mission burrito? Oh, I have. Best comfort food ever. Well, there's a place nearby if we're anonymous. This crew will be will never say no to burritos. We have a lot to do. What do you all think about staying the night? We won't have to waste time taking people home. We don't want to impose. Not imposing. I'm inviting you. Then sure, sounds good to us. Great, so second step in the plan. I have to borrow sheets and blankets from my neighbor. How do you feel about watching Hasmo when the time comes? I'm sure we'll manage. Anthony, want, want to walk with me to grab food? Some wasn't kidding. Those things are huge. I could use the extra an extra hand. Are you sure it's safe? I think it's been long enough that Arrows has stepped on, stepped, stepped looking f into looking. The burrito, the burrito place is a hole in the hole in the wall anyway. No one will be around this late. I mean, we could just stay here and scrounge. I've got some lo locally sourced micro beans, home brewed kombucha, organic almond butter. Just to learn a little more about cotton, and later have this is your chance to learn a little more about cotton, and later have the opportunity to babysit Hasma with someone of your choice. If we can be with someone with our choice, then yeah. I'll never turn down the opportunity to enormous burritos. I like your style. You and you and Khan stick to the shadows as you make your way to the restaurant. You know, I have to admit, you make you made a pretty good case for me joining to join up. I didn't think you were going to change my mind. Glad we did. The energy of your group is so powerful. Reminds me of when I was young, impassioned spirit who just wanted to make the world a better place. How'd you end up working for a place like Arrows with the with a mindset like that? Well, I didn't start working for them right out of college. When I graduated, I did a lot of freelance programming work to get by. It was great at the time. I made my own hours sunbathing in Bali. Went to te went tandem bike riding on my breaks. Totally laid back, but I knew I never knew I needed something a little more stable going forward. Makes sense. Arrow's juice bar, bar was severely serv lacking, but they were committed to their mission, unlike any other company I'd ever seen. They courted. They. They courted me, wrote me in with promises of changing and changing the future, appreciating life, and humble creation of it. It was a huge chance of pace from what I was doing right right out of school, but it was uh, was what <sighs> I needed at the time. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm st I'm still stuck on the sub bidding in Bali part, to be honest. There are, there are worse things to do post grad. What about you? What did you do right out of college? 
Actually, I didn't go to college. I started working right out of high school. It was it was a lot of odd jobs and trial and error until I figured out what I liked and was good at. But it all worked out. That's great. I bet you got a lot of invaluable experience that way. I like to think so. Khan points at an inconspicuous sign jutting out of the side of the of a building. This is the place. Once inside, Khan goes up to the counter and orders. It will be a minute before the food is ready. We can still sit in the meantime. The two of you pull up the stools at the bar. Can I ask about Hazma's mother? Her name is Sujin. We actually met in Thailand while she was there for work. What does she do? She's a marine conversationalist, crazy smart, but a natural wandering soul. Her job keeps her her hopping from one place to the next. I don't think she's ever stayed in the place is for more than a year. When she got pregnant, she knew it wasn't the life she wanted for herself. I totally respected that, and I still do. I was more than happy to take on the single dad role. Do you still have feelings for her? I've always loved her. I'll always, lo I'll always love her. But I'm not in love with her. It's f that's what you're asking. We never expected our relationship to be a, to be long term, so there was never any bad blood between us, not even close. Suddenly, one of the waiters arrives with your food in a to-go bag. Come on, we should head back. As soon as you enter Khan's apartment, Hasmus runs up shrieking, "Burritos!" Khan grins and hands Hazma his burrito first before helping you pass out the rest. This burrito is almost as big as, as he is. Hazma tears, tears in the tor tortilla like a wild animal. Remember that podcast we listened to about mindful eating, Sprout? When everyone finishes eating, Khan wipes his hands with a napkin and stands. I should head over to the neighbors before they fall asleep. You you still cool taking care of Hazma? I mean Hanma Hamza. I keep saying Hazma. I think I can revive myself from my food coma for long enough. Nice. Whoever isn't babysitting on babysitting duty can come with me. I'm ready to play. I might need an endless uh, babysit sidekick. You give Hayden a pleading look as Khan and the others head out. Asma starts jumping on the couch, howling. Hey, there's some water, there's some water coloring stuff over here. Do you like to paint, Asma? Sometimes. I bet you're really good. Come, come on, let's all paint together. Hayden sets up paper and brushes for all of you. Hamza. Climbs into the chair to start working. I'm going to paint three dinosaurs fighting with big tiger sharks. What? They have wings on rings on a rocket ship. Very creative. As it starts pointing, and after a few minutes, you and Hayden are entranced. Wow, he's actually pretty good. The level of detail on the sharks, especially. Hasma. Hamza finishes the pitcher, puts the brush down, and shoves his pitcher away. He yawns. Okay, I'm tired now. Must have been the, the giant burrito. I got you, bud. Hayden carries Hamza over to the couch and gently plops down next to him. On the cushions, Hamza leans up against her and promptly starts to snore. Wow, kids really can fall asleep instantly, can they? Guess so. After a moment, Hayden glances down at Hamza and frowns softly. 
be okay. Just thinking about all of it. I guess Khan, the future kids, the fact that I might outlive everyone I love. She gives you a half, half, a half-hearted smile and shrugs gently, so as as to not, as not to disturb has Hamza. You know the usual. Hayden, do you wish you, do you wish you could have been a kid? No. We'll figure something out. Who knows? So I might crack the code of immortality before we can ever, ever have to deal with that. And if not, I hear becoming a vampire is pretty cool. I'd be down for that. Oh, yeah. I'm just saying there are possibilities. Before you can say anything else, Khan and the others return with extra sheets and blankets. Hamza rouses awake and grins. Khan starts passing out the extra bedding. Thanks for taking care of my fledging oak, Anthony. Anytime. After dinner, everyone changes clothes and to changes clothes to get ready for bed. All right, that should be enough to transform my living room into a hotel for Mistress Night. Let's build a pillow fort. Then where would we sleep, bud? In the pillow for a duh. Did I forget something? He opens the door to a familiar face. Woof! Dipper bounds into the apartment. Dipper, no, bad dog. Doggy! Dipper runs straight into Hamza's arms, licking all over his face as the kid laughs and wrestles with her. Ah, that dog has been sitting by the door whining ever since you left. And in the car, and in the car, the whole way here. So she's your problem now. Now, yeah, we're in someone else's house. You can't just bring us a dog. Don't worry. All living creatures are welcomed here. So long as they're housebroken. We bought Steve's famous homemade lemon bars. They're a no-bake version. Our hotel microwave wasn't cutting it. Steve lifts up a foil-covered plate as proof, and Khan takes it from him, utterly bewildered. And you are... I'm sorry, this is my cousin Nadia. I texted her your address to ease her mind, but I didn't think she'd invite herself over. Nadia flares her lashes instantly at you. You said you're staying the night, right? At least we can do is... The least we can do is... Bring him home baked dessert. I'm sure checking up on us had nothing to do with with it. Hope you enjoy those lemon bars. I'm the baker, Steve. I'm the baker, Steve. He's also a match. Uh, Khan looks looks him over with with sudden intense interest. Um. Uh. Hi there. Have you also started to move past your programming? Um, you see, that's kind of a rude question, isn't it? Asking someone you just met about their programming? Sorry, no, he's basically invented, he basically invented the matches, and he's excited to meet them. Now you keys Khan Warley. Hmm, well, you have your lemon bars, we're leaving now. Bye! She prods a flusters, she prods a flustered, Steve out the door and quickly shuts it shuts it behind them. Goodbye, I guess. By the time you've eaten all the lemon bars, the five of you have have sketched out a plan. Can we go over it one more time so I can write it all write it down? You're taking notes on our schemes? Yes, it it's important we all be on the same page. I see what you did there. Huh? Did where? Anyway, rehashing is is a good idea. So, first, we redo the code stuff, right? Khan and I will work on a new version for the safety me mechanism. 
once that's stronger and harder for arrows to break, then we'll push the update to the matches. I hope to completely replace the code so all the headway arrows has made on removing the safety will be worthless. But making but making the update go out has to be done on a fancy arrows machine, right? So we break into arrows for into the Aeros facility here in San Francisco, upload the code, press the magic button, and that's it. There's a comp there's an Aeros company here in San Francisco. How many places do they have? They make it sound so easy. Oh come on, Sloan. Breaking and entering should be second nature by now. Their offices is here are we have less security than other facilities since there's since where they train new hires here's but it's still not going to be simple Hamza toddles over hey what is it little sprout Hamza half climbs into his dad's lap rubbing his face into Khan's side and whining sleepy Khan scoops the boy up into his arms I think the rest will have to wait until morning sleep well everyone if you need guide if you need guided sleep meditation podcasts, I got you covered. Yeah, um, I'm good. He carries Hamza already dozing in his arms out of the room. Spare couch cushions and the and a mattress have been prepared on the floor in the living room and the remaining furniture wrapped in bed sheets. All right, time to decide who gets the couch and who gets the floor. You know, the floor has plenty of cushions, plus it's the biggest space optimal for cuddling. So then, the question is, who gets to cuddle you in the middle? Well, isn't it obvious? Who cares about couches when I have you? Ugh, that's so cheesy. You sound just, you sound like Steve. Once you settle down, Dipper curls up the floor at Hayden's feet. Mm. Does does this kind of feel like a sleepover to anyone? I think I'm having flashbacks to middle school. If anyone suggests we paint each other's nails, I'm out. Isn't that for girls? It's not a real sleepover without well, truth or dare. Seriously, this is the second truth or dare. This, uh, this is the third truth or the. This is the third truth or dare. This is the third truth or dare game, I've ever. I've ever played. I was trying to wrap up um high school story book two. I finished that this week. Now I'm just need to do book three. That, so that way I can restart book, I can restart high school story class act. That way I'm all caught up and my character will be in high school story class act, which will take a while. Anyway, let's continue with the third, with a, with another truth or dare game. Oh sure, Sloan, truth or dare. Um, dare? I dare you to go to sleep. Good night. With one swift movement, you yank the blanket off to of, off of Damien. Hey! You deserve that. Damien grumbles, wrestles, wrestling the blanket back over himself. Damien, why do you hate fun? We just have different definitions of fun. Honestly, sleepovers were usually miserable for me. My sisters had so many of them growing up, and I always had to hide, hide in my room and suffer. Plus, they were calling up their crushes just to hang up on them. They'd hog all. They hogged the landline, and no one else could even make a make a call. Ah, landlines! I remember the dark ages. We don't even need to make a call. Khan is in the other room. We can just go tell him that Sloane has Sloane has a huge crush. Rose, don't you dare! The group quiets down. Everyone lost in their own thoughts. The only sound is 
and then he's, he's the occasionally gone. You know, I never been to, been to a sleepover. Oh, did I forget to include one in your memories? I thought there was. No, I mean a real sleepover, real memories. I don't have any fun high school, nor childhood stories. Hayden, you 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 squeeze her hand, running a comfort thumbing across her knuckles. Sorry to bring everyone down. Hey, no need to apologize for telling the truth. You snuggle closer to Hagen, savoring the warmth of your tangled limbs. We really should head to sleep anyway. Speaking of sleep, who's gonna get up and turn off the lights? I'm so comfortable, I don't wanna move. All house all houses should come come with those clap on, clap off lights. Wow, you really are one hundred years old. Did Khan not introduce you to you to his home assistant was that the woman was that the woman who babysat Hamza earlier nope it's not a person he programmed this himself watch hey savvy turn off the lights okay lights for this room are off oh it's like Alexa all right technology has officially gone too far I thought, I thought I was proof enough that of that. I know I said that when we first met, but I was wrong. You're a good person, Hayden. You've proven that time and time again. Wow, Damien, I was just joking around, but thank you. Damien, that's so sweet. I still don't trust this savvy thing, though. You hear the door to Khan's bedroom creak open. Sorry to kill the vibes, but can you practice your can you practice using your ASMR voices? You're going to wake up Hamza. Sorry. Yeah, we're not used to having kids around. We'll be quiet. Thanks, no worries. But if he wakes up, he's your problem. But he's your son. He shuts the he shuts his door again, and a round of quiet, nervous laughter runs around the room. A parent scolding us for being too loud. This is definitely a sleepover. After a round, after a after a round of whispered good nights to each other, you all drift off to sleep. In the middle of the night, you wake up to find Hayden snoring quietly in your arms. I wish I could always wake up to this. You nose your face against Hayden's shoulder and drift back to sleep. The next morning, you and Sloane, you and Sloane grab coffee and break and breakfast for the team. And before a long day of coding, she hasn't stopped gushing about Khan since she woke up. And this morning, he was checking out Hayden's specs, and he was so impressed he wasn't just saying so. I know, cause I asked him, and. She takes an enormous breath and then opens her mouth to continue. So, stop. Breathe. I am breathing. I'm fine. You're fine. You're fine? Try esticated. Your hero is impressed with you. See, it's not like that. Oh, really? No, you mean you haven't been starstruck since the party? I'm not... I'm not one of his fangirls. Nor do I have a crush on him. Uh-huh. I didn't say you did. So, in momentarily stunned, speechless, then turns her back on you to say the display of pastries. You know, my mom used to tease me about Khan, too. About your hero worship of, well, about my professional admiration of Khan. <laughs> I'm sure she'd be happy to know that he's totally in awe of, of your tech powers. Someone doesn't respond, picking at the paper sleeve on her coffee cup. Wish I could talk to her and, her and 
not just about Khan, but everything. Meaning you seeing what Eros has done with my work. I haven't really spoken to her since we left New York. I've sent her a few texts, claimed to be busy, but... Well, why don't you call her? Anthony, people have shot... People have shot at us. I can't tell my mother that. Not that part of what's going on, but the part... But the rest of it. Nothing you mentioned wanting to say sounded unreasonable. You can always be honest... You can always be honest that that there are some things you can't share but I'm sure you had had to be confident in your work before you're right I hadn't thought of it that way I think I'll call her when we get back to Khan's place if you want to really blow her mind tell her you're sleeping over at his house absolutely not she would she, she would tease me even worse than you do isn't that the plan? <laughs> the two of you join the others back in Khan's apartment. All right, everybody. Breakfast is served. Bagels and scones and pastries. Oh my. Um. It is way too early for you to be this peppy. He pushes his coffee or off the order into his hands and ruffles his hair. More coffee, less grumpy. Khan and Hayden are deep in conversation, barely glancing up when you enter. This is remarkable. I never imagined the matches could be capable of this, of so much life. They're wonderful, aren't they? Sometimes I feel I've learned so much about my, my own humanity, just from knowing Hayden. Oh, she's wearing the, the outfit from Tokyo. You never told me that, Sloan. Well, it's true. I would be a very different person if I'd never met you. When I left, we were still trying to make their speech patterns sound natural and human. Wait, can you sing? Haynes sings beautifully. If you like, she could even sing it in Russian, Spanish, Portuguese. But I'd be give you an amazing massage while doing it. Oh, that's impressive resume. Yeah, she's pretty amazing. She can even fly a helicopter. All that, and it makes me toast. And even makes toast. So, Mrs. Hayden's stony expression, focusing instead on Khan's open laptop and the code he's working on. Is this the new safety mechanism you're working on? Yeah, it's turning out to be more difficult than I thought. Especially with how advanced the new match software has become. She concentrates on the screen as she scrolls through it, her tongue peeking out of her corner of her mouth as she concentrates. No wonder you're struggling. You've got leaky abs abstractions. What? Where? The two chatter and immediately about the project, the barrage of tech jargon going completely over your head. I can't understand what they're saying, it, and it's giving me a headache. I need fresh air. Time to take a walk. Right behind you. You and Damien Wander, Clarion Street, famous for its street art. There are replications of movie scenes, giant creatures, and even a rainbow map of the city. They impose beneath a painting of an enormous angry we face on the side of a building. Check out, check this one out. I almost can't look at it for for long before it starts, or it starts to creep me out. You have no idea how happy I am to hear you say that. You, you're happy. I think this art is scary. Maybe I'm just happy you're here to complain about other things with me again. Just drill down the sidewalk, taking the art. Making the art, enjoying normal city life. I've always wanted to visit San Francisco. My other sister Hope came here years ago during a college summer break and sent me dozens of pictures. Most of the photos were street art museums, museums, festivals. I can imagine in her taking selfies in front of the mur these murals. She was an artist. 
was an artist. Yeah, art doesn't pay rent, unfortunately. Last I heard, she he and her wife owned on a burger franchise down in San Diego. Wait, so she's... Wait, she's a lesbian? Huh, that's new. Back in New York, you never talked about your family beyond a few casual mentions, but recently you've bought them up a lot. So stop if you heard this one out of line. Did you want me to know about them, or are you not speaking terms? Yes and no. We didn't have a falling out or anything. I just couldn't face them after everything that happened in B-10. Yeah, I can understand that. Being locked up by arrows left me with a lot to think. Heck, there was a there was nothing to do but think. It pr really puts things into perspective when you're all alone, losing hope of being rescued. You think about the things that truly matter. Does this mean you want to try and repair the relationship? Yes, definitely, but how? I can't just call them out of the blue. Hi, remember me? The guy who hasn't called in four years? What's up? You could do exactly that. I'm sure they want to hear from you so just as badly. Damien skulls at the sidewalk, shaking his head. Baby steps for now. I'm working on being okay with thinking of them again, and forgiving myself for starve for staying away for so long. When it helped to talk about them, I realized I don't know a ton about them, except you seem to have a, a near infinite amount of sisters. It feels like and feels like that sometimes, but there's there's only four. Hope he, hope is the oldest. The rest are younger than me. Isabella, Karina, and of course Lucilia. The only boy in the family of four sisters? Wow. I thought Loud House was weird. Oh wait, it is weird. Come eat. Um, we already know that his sisters pick on him. Because she had a brother? Trust me, I would never wish for more siblings. It was hard enough sharing a bathroom booth between six people. Plus, little girls aren't all princesses and tea parties. They play rough and can be absolutely vicious. Hey, I grew up with Nadia. You don't have to tell me twice. They like a plot. They like to plot out of elaborate battles with their dolls. With their dolls, that took up the whole living room. Glittering princess gowns, sparkling ponies, and swords stolen from the vamp from my pirate set. It was a fearsome army to behold. I can imagine. We should head back, but thanks for listening to me. It means a lot, knowing I can always be open with you. Anytime, Damien. You and Damien return to Khan's apartment and see Hamza sitting quietly in a corner of the room, his lap full of silk flowers and ribbons. Good morning, Hamza. Hi. What you doing, buddy? Making a flower hat. Hamza hums to himself, clumsy fingers working to string the flowers again together into a, uh, excuse me, into a garland. You stand by Khan, keeping your voice low. Khan, who is this child? And what did you do with the little T-Rex from last night? Haha, <laughs> this is how he is most of the time. He only goes full dinosaur when he when his babysitter lets him have too much sugar. He really is like a whole pers different person. I'm glad you get to see see his gentler side. He's a creative boy and he loves making things. Wonder who get, wonder who he gets them from gets that from. Dipper plants on a on the carpet. Laying still and patiently while Hamza leans against her like she's a beanbag chair. 
Okay, it's done. Teddy, will you tie it fr fry it for me? Amza hands a long flower garland to his dad, who ties off the end of the end and fluffs it into a pretty flower crown. It's very well done, Hamza. You look great in it. Hamza shakes his head vigorously and runs back to Dipper. Hold still, puppy. Dipper remains perfectly calm and as Hamza plops the flower crown on her head. On her head. His chubby child hands rubbing all over her face. Now come here so Daddy can tie the bow. The dog trots along behind the boy, shaking her head every few steps to dislodge the flowers. Hamza directs his dad to tie a big bow around Dipper's neck, fussing with it until he declares, There, it's perfect. Oh, ho, ho. I didn't I didn't know you could get more even cuter, Dipper. Nadia needs to see this. She snaps photos with her phone while Dipper twirls in circles and shakes her head, trying to get it off. Dipper, hold still for the camera, please. Er. Dipper squirms, trying to, trying to be good until Sloane is done taking photos. Are you liking it, Dipper? <laughs> Hamza, I'm not sure Dipper appreciates her hat. Hamza drops to the floor and wraps his arms around Dipper, hugging her and nuzzling her. Nuzzling his face into her fur. But you're the best doggy, and now you're the most pretty. And you're so pretty, and every other doggy will will know you're the best. Hmm? The boy nuzzles his face into Dipper's fur, petting her and telling her how pretty she is. The itchy flowers are suddenly forgotten. Oof. Is it just me, or is Dipper preying? That dog is so spoiled. Yeah, well, she's a good dog. Correction, she is the best doggy. Use her prof proper title, Damien. Sorry, my bad. Daddy, daddy, did you see Dipper? Look, he hops up and sprints across the room. And clips his hat on, on the end of the table, knocking over a box of face planting into the carpet. Ouch! You alright, Sprout? Daddy, my elbow. He buries his face in Khan's side as his dad inspects the rug in the burn his elbow. It's not bleeding, and you can move it fine. It's just going to hurt for a bit, okay? But it will fade, I promise. <sighs> the box Hamza knocked over scoots along the floor, shaking anonymously and emitting a small rumbling noise. Uh, guys... That box is moving and growling. Oh no, you woke it up. Everybody stay back. It could be dangerous. Like a bomb? Peace, everyone. It's not a bomb. Dipper prowls at the box, creeping up to sniff at it suspiciously. Con, Con wrestles the box into his arms, brings it over, and holds, a f holds it. Face down on the table, where it rumbles and shakes against his hand. Everyone, there's someone I'd like you to meet. He lifts the box to reveal. Oh! <gasps> oh my goodness, it's cute! What is that? Oh, you! Oh my god. It's so cute! Are you an alien? Ooh. This is the UWU. But we pronounce it UWU. It stands for User Wellness Upkeep Bot. Honestly, the acronym is a stretch. We just wanted to name him after the sounds he always makes. Woo, 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 woo. A glitter of star bursts across Uwu's face screen as he flaps his arms. Uwu is something I've been working on for another job. He's a, com 
a pay-in bot for the elderly, children in the in hospitals, or patients who are are bedridden. Does he do anything? Woo woo. Besides that, who can monitor vital signs, alert caretakers, and medical emergencies facility? Emergencies, facilitate social development, and remind patients to take medicine, medication. Sounds pretty handy. This one is just a prototype. He's meant to show off the social features, but the programming is raw, and he's a little quirky. Woo? I didn't want Hamza to see him. I was going to give it, give it, wait, going to give him... If him one of one of the final products with the full features as a surprise, but well, wait, I get one. Yep, Sprout, probably for Christmas. Hamza does a frantic dance, wiggling his arms all around, and Woo Woo watches him spellbound. Woo! So, what are you going to, going to do with this one then? He he kind of. He's kind of useless. I was probably going to break him down in spare parts. No. What? That's terrible. Woo? Or not. Or I won't do that at all. My bad. Surely even without the final features, he makes a good toy. Or could donate him to a kid's organization somewhere. Okay, I'm. I don't know if I can say this, but yeah, I'm gonna say it at the end. Yeah, I could do that unless you want him. So cute. I'm taking a picture. I'm taking a picture. Thank. Yep, got him. What do you want to do? Adopt you yourself? Convince Khan to find Uwa another home. We're adopting this little cutie. At your answer, little hearts break out on the screen around Uwu's face. Woo! Wait, you aren't seriously thinking of taking that thing with us, are you? Am I going to keep keep a fluffy, adorable ball of happiness to carry with me always, always in love forever? Uh, yes, is that even a question? Cool, let me grab Analyzing Our Rail once we set up everything. We set everything up, and we will officially recognize you as his new family. Do you hear that? Where is new family? Congrats, you're the proud par parent of a brand new baby fuzzball. Woo-woo! So, we get to keep him? Film throws her arms around you and squeeze you tight. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Hey, I didn't get him for you. Dipper jumps him. Um, some pulls her paws on the table, straining forward so she can sniff Uwu. Her wet nose boops into Uwu's butt. Ooh! Skulls light up in Uwu's eyes. The little roar spins around, scandalizing and swats Dipper on the nose with the tiny hand. Whoa! Woo! <laughs> Dipper, be nice to your new f to your new friend. Hmm. Uwu stares at the dog, assessing her for a moment. Then holds out a hand as if to shake. Woo! Are they communicating? Dipper licks licks a big wet strip of Uwu's face. All right, get off the table, down, girl. I sit down. Uwu should stand for an occasional woo's use. Isn't that right? Woo woo. Woo woo. Khan returns with some equipment and encourages Uwu to hop into place on the device. Alright, this will only take a minute. Do you want to change his name? Yugu's fine. A few taps of the keys and a light beeping sound later, Yugu hops toward you. There we go. He's all yours. Hi, you. It's nice to meet you. You hold out a finger to the little guy, and he holds it in both of his hands, giving you a shake. You. 
Does he do tricks? He can understand basically commands, basic commands, but I don't know about tricks. Hey, Uwu, can you give me a high five? Like this? You know, Hamza high fives his dad and beams at Uwu, who suddenly gets it. Uwu, the little fuzz hops up and smacks your hand with the with his yay good job you will okay i don't want to say this but i don't know this it's been an hour and 10 minutes and this book isn't over yet it's usually an hour but this is longer than i expected you are a you're a very good fluff this is my life now it's just going to be this all day every day Hey, this isn't bad. I'll take this over ear, over Eros any day. Why are why are my only options evil option evil corporation or exec executive squeeing? Hey, you can I pick you up? I'm coming. And gently set Uwu on a and Hayden's head. Be careful. Uwu is not concerned. He nestles into Hayden's hair and makes a happy cooing noise. You, this is Hayden. She's a robot just like you. Amy plucks the fuzzball from her head and grins in Sloan's words. I wouldn't say we're alike, really. I'm a person, Uwu. Probably isn't even sentient. I mean, look at him. He. Oh God. Uh, you can check people's temperatures and heartbeat. He can scan their brains. He can't scan brains. Uh, he can do tricks. I can't do any tricks. Whoa. You're much more useful than I than I am, little guy. So we're definitely not on the same page. Woo. Ooh hops from Hayden's hands and nuzzles and nuzzle into her shirt. I hope the robot uh, prizing is this adorable all the time. I for one would welcome our fuzzy overlords. Now I'm an evil robot overlord. What? No, I'm just teasing. You know I love you, right? You're the best friend anyone could ask for. Aim pets you absently and smiles at Sloan's fuzzy. Yeah, I know. Do you want to give Sloan a kiss, you woo? A kiss? I don't think he has lips, Anthony. You holds onto Sloan's cheek with both hands and presses her face against her face screen against her. Oh, Love finds a way, Sloan. A rainbow of hearts pop up like fireworks on Yu's face screen as he beams at Sloan. Yu is the cutest thing in existence. Oh my gosh. Hey, whoa, what are you doing? Just hold still. Damien holds a perfectly still holds perfectly still as Yu chirps and clings to him. You woo woo woo. Sorry, he's putting us through this. I can't imagine you like heights that much. You, you so still, still his fluff against Damien's face, making a thrilling sound close to purring as hearts sparkle on his face. Oh, I don't know how many times I'm gonna say woo. Psst! Don't tell Damien, but I think he's falling for this fuzzball. All that grumpy is just to hide his big, gooey marshmallow heart. I heard that. Take this thing back already. You feel a small tap on your sh elbow and turn around to see Hamza looking uncharacteristically shy. Um, Mr. Anthony, I know you is yours and I'll get my own later, but can I play with him until you leave? You look up and notice Khan giving his son an encouragement nod. 
And though they had rehearsed this while you were busy with you, sure you can. And we have we have more grown up boring stuff to talk about anyway. Why don't you watch them until we leave? Yes. Anna takes Ibu from you gently and chatters to him, animatedly only on the way back to his room. Hey, I'm going to make a call. I'm, I'll be right outside, okay? Wait, that's what I was about to, that's what I was about to say. I need to call my mom. Damien slowly turns and narrows his eyes at you. Are you sure? Are you on some sort of mission here, Anthony, getting everyone to call their mothers? Yes, Damien, you caught me red-handed. This is all part of my evil plan to make sure you both are ha both happy and well-loved. You're a monster. So, Devia, someone should stop you before you build a giant death ray. The, they both laugh at you and step away to private places to make their calls. You drift over to where Hayden is in the kitchen, staring at Hasma with a sad expression. How are you doing? I'm fine. You both watch Hamza playing with Yuu. He makes the fuzzball chase a ribbon like a cat and laughs when he gets tangled up. I never had that. I can't ever have that. What, a kid? Is that what's bothering you? That's part of it, but I didn't have a childhood. You all have families, experiences of growing up. And I don't have any of anything like that. Every memory I have of being young, having a mother, going to school, sleepovers with friends, it's all fake. None of those people exist. I know. It must be hard knowing it wasn't real. I made my peace with the fact that they don't exist, but I have no past, no family, no parents, nothing. Hayden, you can have a family of your own someday. You can have a family of your own someday. You can always adopt and experience what childhood is like through the eyes of your own little Hamza. And how exactly does that make up for most of my life, life not being real? And she shoots her feet, slamming her hand on the counter, knocking a few knickknacks over with a crash. Hayden, you can't understand, Anthony. We're not even on even the same species. Doors open throughout the apartment. Everyone returns to the living room, drawn by the shouting and the noise. And it dashes to his dad, hiding behind his legs. All day long, Khan's been looking at me like I'm a fancy new toy. He can't wait to tear apart to find out how it works. Hayden, I never meant, and Sloan can't wait to show me off like some kind of science fair project to impress her teacher. I don't see you like, none of you know what it's like. You can't even begin to imagine what it's like being me. I miss having someone around who actually understands. Seems so wrecked up in his own thing. I'm, I miss dames. I, you reach for Hayden's hand, trying to cover her, but she presses you off. I just... I can't do this anymore. I'm sorry. Anza flitches back back as Hayden storms across the room, yanks the door open, and slams it behind her. Hayden? Are you kidding me? Oh my goodness. You're, so, after an hour long... long we gotta cheer up Hayden. Okay, and I'm hoping nothing bad happens to her. And I'm hoping she doesn't hope. I hope something doesn't happen. All right. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video today. Make sure you guys give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe if you're new to my channel. Share this with your friends. Comment below what you think of the video. And if you want to get notified, if you want to get notified of all the videos I put up on my channel, just hit the notification button next to the subscribe button. I'll see you all in the next video.